Well, hello there, and welcome to another edition of Warbird Wednesday. My name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum, and I hope everyone had a great Christmas and that Santa Claus came along and did whatever he wanted to do for you. He dropped off your stuff, and, and you got what you wanted, and now... Today, we're working towards the end of 2020. Greg, there are a lot of people that are going to be very happy that 2020 is in the rearview mirror, I think. What an interesting year it has been. Uh, we are continuing to work out of one of our... Actually, you're seeing us in one of our storage hangars, our maintenance hangars, and what we do is we rotate inventory through. So I am standing today in front of a Cessna, an O2, uh, a sky master which we're going to talk about but first i'm going to talk about my temerius assistant did i get it is temerius greg is you know throwing these words at me so uh, again you got to look that one up and of course i am glittering today with my festive new year's hat i'm afraid that if i stay around the airport there's greg an airplane could line up on me and try to land on me with this thing so i'm going to take this off i'm going to toss it off camera there we go, a excellent catch. And so we're gonna move into the O2, the Skymaster. Now this follows kind of where we've been going uh, on our observation airplanes and, and we're kind of going down the line. We've got another one next week as we work towards that, towards that piece of our inventory. Now the interesting thing, Greg, is unlike last week, you know, we got some static for the Mohawk front section. You know, Greg was sad. Greg shed a tear. He was very sad. We actually watered it and tried to see if we could grow the rear section, but that didn't happen. But sometimes we just get only sections of airplanes. And the other side for us too, Greg, and like what we're doing here today in our storage hangars, is we only have so much space. We have about 10 acres and about 100,000 feet under roof. We have to get as much stuff in there. So, But today, you are in lock, Greg. This is a complete airplane. This O2 uh, Skymaster was uh, first flown. It is a derivative of a private aircraft with Cessna, and what they were trying to do was to retire the O1 Bird Dog. I'm going to give you a preview. That's the airplane we're going to cover next week. So we've got the, the successor to the Bird Dog, and uh, we'll actually have one of those next week in our observation uh, videos on our observation airplanes. But this airplane uh, first flew in uh, 1967 in this configuration, and it was introduced in 1967. That's kind of unusual, Greg. A lot of airplanes, they do a prototype. That was not the case with this aircraft. Now, this aircraft fit, you know, the bird dog and the observation airplanes that we've been talking about. They have this high wing. They've got really, really good visibility. Remember, they are not designed for air superiority. This aircraft uh, flew at about a cruising speed of about 140 miles an hour. Uh, it was designed to go out. And remember O for observation, which is something we talked about with drones. The drones go out now and really have completely replaced these airplanes. But back in the day, you were still sighting airstrikes, uh, flying in close air support to uh, troops that were calling in airstrikes on the ground, and uh, you were sighting artillery, and you were out doing reconnaissance. Now, the sensors were changing. We've ta talked about that uh, SLAR, that side-looking uh, airborne radar, but uh, this airplane did not, it had more communications equipment in it. it the, the civilian version of this aircraft, I think, had a six-seat configuration. This actually went down to two, it was uh, heavier than the, at 5,400 pounds, primarily because a lot of communication equipment in it, because it had to do a lot of communication. Um, but you could look outside of it and, uh, and look down on the enemy. It was very maneuverable. Um, in fact, you know, and it's been in movies, I think Bat-21, Greg, if you check that, I think that movie, uh, he was flying uh, an O2. Um, we'll talk about the armament in a second. But so the airplane um, really kind of came in. It had a push-pull configuration. So you had a, a propeller and an engine on the front and one in the back. If you talk to people 
that fly these, they will tell you, I think, and you affectionados can argue with me, but that they are a bit underpowered. But they, they had, because of this configuration, you had a nice centerline thrust with the airplane, and uh, it really reasonably handled uh, fairly well. As I said, it was heavier. Uh, the reason it's heavier, it had uh, self-sealing fuel tanks. It held that communication equipment in it. It also, and this aircraft, this is an A model. It actually had hard points, Greg, if you can believe that. It had hard points under the wings where they could carry rockets. It could drop bomblets. And we were getting into those, you know, those little uh, uh, infantry troops, call them toe poppers. You know, they would drop them, and they were just small grenades, but they'd do enough to injure you. Remember, thinking at that time had changed in uh, close air support uh, from in World War II, and I've talked about American military doctrine about uh, fixing the enemy and just, you know, attacking them with everything you had. That was American military doctrine. Um, now, but it had changed in all of our weapons in that we're trying to injure people. Because I know that sounds terrible, but what happens when you injure somebody on the battlefield, Greg? You have to have medical facilities, so you tire up resources, and you have to have a couple of people haul them back to wherever you're going. So all of our weapons, including uh, what they were doing with close air support, with the exception of there's one bomber in the inventory that they were not trying to injure anyone, and that was a B-52. If a B-52 showed up and you were on the ground and made a bombing run at you in Vietnam, you were most likely toast. In fact, you weren't even really toast, Greg. You were probably applesauce at that point because the bombs and the concussion was so great. But this airplane, it was designed, if you're going to call in a B-52 strike or, let's say, an F-100 or an F-4 um, or you call in artillery, this is the airplane would do it. Now, it carried uh, underwing rocket pods. Uh, it carried uh, 50 caliber machine guns, and it carried those bomb dispensers. Now, it also, in those rocket pods, it could fire something that is also outlawed now, Greg. You know what that is. Phosphorus. It would fire white phosphorus. That is actually uh, outlawed because phosphorus doesn't go out. You know, it, it burns, and if it gets on you, it'll just go right through you. So it's been deemed a nasty weapon, kind of along the lines of another one that they don't use anymore, Greg, which is napalm. So that's kind of a sidebar off the... the uh, the track here. But this airplane uh, was used by the Air Force as a forward air controller. It was used by the Navy in some testing, and it was used by the Army. Now, believe this or not, it was used by the Army up to testing up to 2010, which is something I did not know about. I, that was interesting that they, that they went along uh, that far. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pick up my airplane. We actually this one we have, some of these we don't have a model. This one is, and Greg can throw up that uh, plan view. This is a rather dainty model. This is along the lines of that P-39 you gave, Greg, me, but gave me, Greg. But you can see, and this actually has it, you have uh, underwing rockets, you have uh, bomblets or rocket pods. You can see that center line of thrust that I was talking about pretty good. Three-point stance on the airplane high wing, <coughs> split tail, uh, and all around, you know, a fairly good design. This was one of those civilian designs uh, that we've been talking about with some of the aircraft that were kind of repurposed. It um, did not perform as well as the civilian version, uh, primarily because of the weight increase that I talked about, and also it had a lot of antennas and things hanging off of it that would slow it down and create gr drag. But, you know, all in all, uh, for its purpose, it was not a bad airplane. Now we're going to see it wants to take off, Greg. It's, it's tilting back. It's trying to take off. Now what we're going to do today is, and this is a fitting soda. What did this airplane do? What I talked about provide, provided primarily of the 540 of the 513 built uh, uh, FAC forward air controller. We're going to salute the people on the ground. And Greg has really outdone himself. Merry Christmas, Greg. Thank you for this. Um, I am looking at here dirt soda. So excited about dirt soda. Um, yeah, there's pure cane sugar in it, which is a good thing. Shoveled and bottled in the USA. Do I, 
Do I really want to drink this? I'm not sure. Uh, 170 calories, usual uh, suspects. I do not see a nice American flag on the side. Uh, I don't see a sell by date, Greg. So this one might be where you get the, the, the cell phone out for poison control. But what I want to do is all the ground pounders, the guys that were down there uh, in the dirt, that this airplane hopefully saved quite a few lives in uh, keeping the enemy's head down when they called in airstrikes. Um, I want to salute you because uh, being in the infantry is an extremely difficult job. It's up close and personal. And uh, all those folks that were ground troops in any of the conflicts, whether it's Korea, Vietnam, any of those, I want to, I want to salute you. And I, that means, what am I going to do? I feel like Cal Worthington. You know, I'll, I'll do anything to sell a car. I'm going to drink dirt to salute you. Here. So I knew that, never knew there was liquid dirt. All right, so we, we've used our magnetic, non-magnetic can opener or bottle opener. All right, Greg. <laughs> I, I can tell you, I, this one I have trepidation on. I, I'm very concerned. It smells like dirt. Oh, Greg. Oh, he's laughing. You cannot see him. He is really chuckling. Oh, that's that's just offensive. All right, we're going to do one more of these like I normally do. You take two because uh, perhaps I'm, my palate is just not adjusted to dirt. But, uh, No, no, thank you. Uh, by the way, Dirt Soda is not a sponsor of the program. I'm sorry with the people at, at the fine dirt product. I, uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, that's one of those where you have to wonder why would you even bottle this? But you know, somebody might like it. You know, palate. Up oh, there goes one of those fine aviation products. Don't know if I lost my mic or not. So, a lot of these aircraft. Uh, found their way into um, private service after the war. They went over, we've talked about AMARC, or the Boneyard. A lot of them went over the Boneyard. There are still torn down versions of these aircraft at the Boneyard, Greg. Right? Do you know that? They're still, they're still stored there. Um, but a lot of them went into private hands. They also went somewhere else. They went to CAL FIRE. And they were used as a firefighting observation aircraft with CAL FIRE, um, they, uh, up into the 2000s where they were replaced uh, with the Broncos, the OV-10 Bronco, which we are going to get one of those, Greg. I've already vowed to do that. Um, the Broncos replaced them uh, primarily because they're a turboprop, easier to maintain, they're a little bit faster. Um, and, and so these went into museums. This particular, we talked about, this particular aircraft has two things. It has combat time. It actually did see combat. Uh, and it also has CAL FIRE time. In fact, this aircraft, when it came in, was uh, in CAL FIRE livery. We have put it back in based on the uh, what we have on the airplane back into a forward, control, forward air controller livery uh, that it would have had. Uh, sometime in its its service life, but it did it did soldier on. So in our inventory now, we rotate it in and out with the miles hanger. It is a very very cool uh, addition to our our pro our um, our aircraft our inventory. But but it is and it was significant. You know that not everything has to be this fighter to have uh, aircraft or or combat time, but it it did have it soldiered on with Cal Fire. And then it was retired. So now, Greg, a Fred fun fact. This is going to be a fun one. This aircraft, this design, morphed into something else. Are you ready, Greg? The Advanced Vehicle Engineers, AVE, were some Northrop, some guys who graduated out of uh, Northrop uh, uh, School of Engineering. Uh, created the AVE Mazar. Now the Mazar is named after a star. Did you know that, Greg? It's named after a star. And uh, the AVE Mazar. Now, Greg, this this is something that 
Uh, I'm going to go through this rather quickly, but uh, you can kind of understand the outcome. They basically took, and Greg can get some pictures of this and throw it up, it was in the early 70s. They basically took the wings and the rear section and they melded it to a Ford Pinto. And this was a attempt to come up at a flying car because you basically could unbolt the section, take it off, and you could drive the Pinto away. Now, I'm going to date myself, but anybody who knows a Ford Pinto probably realizes that that's not a brilliant idea. But they did it nonetheless. Uh, they flew it uh, a bit until, until, Greg, maybe it was a portent of things to come. The um, wing fell off and killed both of the designers in an accident. The, the, the engineers who designed it were killed, and that was the end of the AVE Mazar, but there was kind of an interesting kind of Frankenstein monster uh, chain of this, but the, the use of a Pinto I, I thought was, was rather interesting. But that was a derivative of this airplane, so it, it went on and, and did some other stuff. Now, I have today, Greg, I have something. I have a fan. Can you believe it? I have a fan, Greg. Greg shaking his head, oh no. I have a fan. And Alex is going to come over here. We're going to socially distance. So Alex is going to stand like right there. Come on over here, Alex. Now remember, you, there he is. He is a real fan. <clears throat> so you got to turn and face the camera because Alex is helping us do the gratuitous product placement, Alex. So Alex is wearing our hat, the Cessna hat. Model the hat. You, there you go. Come on, you, you can model it. Uh, there you go. There you, you're doing really well. You got to face the camera. So this is Alex. Alex is a fan. So you can reach out to Greg if you would like to model gratuitous product placement. Reach out to Greg and we'll work you in. But Alex, Happy New Year. You're also, you're, you're also using, you're wearing one of our, our shirts here. I'm going to use this as a microphone. Yeah, so I have my uh, F-117 shirt on. And if you like stealth aircraft, you need this shirt. It's an absolute necessity for anybody who likes stealthy airplanes. Alex, I think Alex may be hired as our gratuitous product placement model. Not only, he's watched the show enough to know you, my, my catchphrase, you need this. And so today, not only, Alex is like modeling not only the shirt, but this is your personal shirt, right? Yeah. It's your personal shirt and the hat. So if you, but it, you know, we have it in all these beautiful colors. And if you need one of these from Cessna, if you're a used Cessna fan, go out to our website and uh, get one of these really, really cool hats. Now, Alex, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, very good. You've done a great job. My name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. I want to thank you for joining us on another edition of Warbird Wednesday. Remember, Go out to, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, uh, hit, hit the like button as well. Like us on Facebook. Remember, we can always use your donations. They're 100% they're tax deductible. We've got another fine airplane going by, but it, we can't restore these airplanes without your donations. Again, thank you for joining us at Warbird Wednesday. Have a great day.